India is already ahead of the curve. The Western world might be ahead in terms of new innovations, language models, the research part, but the deployment and adoption, India is far ahead of the Western world. Now, time to hand it over to AI, and then let's evolve together and move towards those better quality, better throughput, better, you know, value to the customers and to the world. And that's how India will evolve over the next five to 10 years. Hello everyone, I'm Ipsita Basu from Your Story and welcome to Up Close, a special series where we bring you candid conversations with some of the most exciting founders and change makers shaping India's future. This is part of our Road to Tech Spark series where we spotlight the stories, ideas and innovations leading up to Your Story's flagship startup tech conference. Rezo AI is an agentic AICX platform and sits at the intersection of technology, customer experience, and scale. It was built as an AI first company, reimagining how enterprises engage with their customers. Today, we are delighted to have Manish Gupta, founder and CEO of Rezo.ai, with us to take us behind the journey and vision of what Rezo is. Welcome, Manish. Great to have you here at Your Story. Thank you so much. I look forward. To start with, uh, you launched Rezo back in 2018 as an AI-first company, uh, long before actually AI became the buzzword that it today is. Uh, you know, tell us what was the original problem that uh, you wanted to solve and how has the vision sort of expanded over the last couple of years? Prior to starting Rezo, uh, so I used to work with a couple of enterprises, I mean, different jobs. Uh, and one of the biggest problem statement that I saw there was unstructured data. So typically enterprises as part of their efficiency improvement as part of their day-to-day -day operations, uh, they were able to handle or automate the structured data. That means numbers. Wherever there are numbers, there are workflows. I mean, you know, you can kind of have processes automate them uh, workflows get structured and things move fast. But the moment you have unstructured data, it could be voice, it could be text, it could be documents uh, across different you know use cases. The moment you used to have unstructured data is where the enterprises used to get a pause in the efficiency of the system. And the only solution that they that they would know about is putting people or humans, on that problem statement. And because uh, of obvious reasons, it used to lead to a cost, it used to lead to a delay in the improvement. And that was the problem that I really saw across enterprises. In one such, one such use case or scenario, I was able to solve that problem. The problem which the enterprise felt was not solvable or has not been solved for 15 years, I was able to solve it in three months time. And that's the sense that I got, that it's a solvable problem. And it was at that point of time where the cloud really picked up. The cost of infrastructure started coming down. Uh, and that's the cusp where I realized that, you know what, this is one thing which the world wants, is how do we kind of automate, how do we make more sense out of unstructured data. And that's where led to the formation of Res. Rezo positions itself as a unified CX agentic AI platform. Can you break this down for us? And how is this whole agentic AI different from the traditional bots or automation? And what does it really mean for enterprises uh, which are managing, you know, millions of customer helplines? When the bots started, maybe about six, seven years back, eight years back, uh, it was supposed to do a specific task right so maybe go from point a to point b and maybe a point c that's it one of the biggest you know industry requirement was that the systems should be able to do end to end as if a human agent does it and hence the word agentic so the the requirement of the industry was how do we get it from 
point, you know, the starting point to the end point, all the way, irrespective of which technology, irrespective of what methodology, which algorithm, it's like it has to be done from end to end. And that's where agentic requirements came in. And with time, the bots kind of evolved and they started providing these technologies, these algorithms to be able to do end to end. So the erstwhile bots were very specific, but today it's these things along with other capabilities are able to complete end to end and hence the agentic. So what does it mean in terms of use cases, right, for enterprises? Earlier they were just solving just one part of the problem and now is everything being taken care of by this whole agentic AI uh, solution? Yes. So let me take some examples. So let's say a travel agent. So earlier, you know, you could actually ask the bot about specific packages, travel packages, what's the cost, what's included, what's not. But now the system, you can actually have the system uh, pick, figure out all the possible scenarios, look up into different systems, check the weather, uh, talk about if there are any events happening in that region that you're going for, uh, you know, as to what's the possible itineraries that could be there. For example, if you're having kids, so you can even check as to are there any special events for the kids during those days. So everything can be done by, the, by this agentic AI platform and it can even go ahead and book some specific spa packages or some tours and travels as part of this entire itinerary. So that's where you know, it becomes uh, amazing. And the good part is you could do this at two in the night, That's right? right? You don't have to be, you know, between nine to five or nine to seven. It could be any time of your choice, any channel of your choice. So it could be on the voice, it could be on the chat, it could be WhatsApp, it could be anything. So that's the power that the agent AI brings on the table. It says, we will deliver things at convenience of the customer and that too on the channel of customer's choice. Right. Handling 35 plus lakh calls daily with 2x better connects now with human-led centers is no small feat. What is the secret sauce here and is it how you've trained the system for India's complexity because India as a market right is very diverse. We have languages, we have different buying capacities. How has that worked out? As an AI product company, one of the biggest focus at Rezo is to keep optimizing, keep improving different components. So one of the big reasons why we have such a better connect rates as compared to REST is because we have a smart dialing strategy. We, we kind of know as to which customer has what is the best chances of the customer picking up the call and basis those, we attempt the customers at that point of time. Second is, even in terms of components like telephony, components like dialers, uh, then the kind of setup we have, in fact, we are even, we have just got the uh, LOI for VNO license as well. So the intent is to go deeper on each and every tech component and try and create efficiencies of it. That's the secret sauce. You know, as uh, India heads towards becoming a dollar ten trillion economy, customer expectations are also evolving faster, right? They're becoming more demanding. Where do you see AI led CX fitting into this whole growth story? And do you think India can sort of leapfrog uh, into building global benchmark in AI driven customer experiences? So India is already ahead of the curve. The Western world might be ahead in terms of new innovations, language models, the research part, but the deployment and adoption, India is far ahead of the Western world. That's one. Uh, in terms of moving ahead, uh, how India will evolve and emerge, and especially over the next three years, five years, ten years. Uh, see, we'll have to understand that India is a service-led economy. What is really happening is with the service component getting automated, it will help us go beyond the service, basic hygiene of service. Today, what happens is as an economy, we focus a lot from zero to 80% through 
you know, repeated tasks, manual tasks and other things. With AI coming in, the cost of delivery, service delivery will reduce. It'll get automated. And hence, a huge focus will go from 80 to 100. Maybe not a 100, but 95, 98. And then a huge focus will also go beyond the service. So today, as an economy, we need to kind of get our hygiene in place. Uh, the what we've been doing over decades, which we have mastered, by the way, doing it manually. Now, time to hand it over to AI. And then let's evolve together and move towards those better quality, better throughput, better, you know, value to the customers and to the world. And that's how India will evolve over the next five to 10 years. We've also heard a lot of uh, apprehension about AI taking away jobs or the human interaction, the human element uh, to interactions, right? While automation will bring in the hygiene of customer service, how do you think is the human interaction going to get involved here? And uh, because it also means uh, having jobs uh, for uh, a country that has so many people. I'm sure this is not the first time that we're hearing, hearing this, right? There have been times in the past when we heard the same thing. Whenever there was a new technology wave, uh, every time this messaging, this pain comes out. But never in the past has there been an unemployment in the system. What will really happen is, and as it has happened in the past, all these jobs will either move you know, laterally into much more evolved things, from a generalist roles to specialist roles, that's one. Second is, it, it kind of starts generating new kind of business models, new kind of employment opportunities. Uh, I'll take some simple examples, right? Who thought that delivery, you know, the quick commerce could generate this kind of employment opportunities, mm. right? In 90s, when the so-called computerizations happened, who knew that India would become a tech IT superpower? That's it. That's it. Please understand, every industry, every vertical has a gestation period. Typically, it's pegged at about 25, 30 years. So we had our tech industry booming up in the mid 90s. It's almost been 30 years. So it's something new to come up. So the time has come. What it will be, I think time will tell. But clearly, there would not be unemployment unless and until we as humans don't want to evolve. That's right. So, you know, from a services hub to an innovation hub is where you think India is going to move. Absolutely. You've been building in a space that's, you know, complex, high stakes and which is deeply also technology led. What's your biggest learning um, as a founder so far? And if we were to sit down again in 2030, what's the vision that you will see for Rezo AI then? India has started moving away from a services economy to an innovation economy. And innovations have started happening. One of the biggest learning I had over the you know last seven, eight years, is keep improving, keep innovating, even the smaller aspects, keep moving. The day you stop, you start plateauing out. So keep doing that. Maybe small, that's okay, but keep improving. Yeah, keep moving no matter what. So, you know, at TechSparks this year, we're talking about bold ideas shaping India uh, in 2030. So for every founder, dreamer, and technologist, uh, what's your message about building for India's future and why does this moment matter? I think it was about three to four years back when I was talking about how the CX automation will happen and it will change the way customers will be served. Uh, I was laughed at. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, four years back, uh, four to five years back, I reached out to all the possible investors and everyone turned me down. They were like, you're right for people, but in a wrong space, this space will never improve. So the question was, I still remember, I got out of one of the meetings with a VC, uh, came down the office, sat on the 
uh, open area. I was like, what do I do? Am I so wrong? And that was the point where I took a call that, no. I think someone is, people are missing something. I will back my idea. I'll take it forward. I'll sponsor it whichever way it is. If you understand, if you back your idea, if you have conviction in it, go for it. But at the same time, keep validating through careful means, careful, but yes. And it's these kind of bold ideas which can actually change a lot of things. And we already have few Elon Musk's emerging out of India. Right. So believe in your idea, think big, but keep validating at every step yes. to know that you're on the right path. Correct. Thank you for your fantastic insights, Manish. Thank you for speaking to your story. Thank you. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Rezo AI isn't just building a customer experience platform. It's building a blueprint for how agentic AI can think, act, and deliver at scale while solving uniquely Indian challenges. From empowering enterprises to serving customers better to unlocking insights across millions of interactions, Rezo is showing us what happens when AI is not just an enabler, but a true business partner. As we count down to tech sparks, stories like Rezo remind us why India's next decade of growth will be defined by bold founders who reimagine how technology can transform everyday experiences. Thank you so much for watching this.